。接下来，让我们有请 Mohammad Salahuddin。Welcome. Thank you, Anne. Good morning, everyone. So this is the place where I work, East West University, our inspiration. So I am from Bangladesh. So let's introduce myself a bit. So I am an assistant professor, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, East West University. I also engaged myself as a moderator, East West University Robotics Club. And I am a member of Seed Ranger program. So before engaging myself as an assistant professor of East West University, I worked uh, as a researcher in Sapienza University of Rome. And that's all uh, about uh, myself. And this is our team. We work together to build something that is helpful for our community, our country, as well as, uh, as the earth. So in our team, we have engineers. We have developers, we have makers, and we have business analysis. So, and I am coordinating this team to build solution to solve oil-defined problems for our country. So our recent work, so we have already developed a prototype uh, for checking the water purification level, especially designed for visually impaired person. So as we know that visually impaired person uh, uh, is unable to check the drinking water. So we, we, we are planning to develop a little device that helps them to check the uh, purity level of drinking water. So in other words, we're currently working on it, smart metering. So in our country, the position of the uh, utility meters uh, is not a good so we need to, uh, if we go for the basement and check them, so that is, uh, that's this one kind of disaster. So we, we need to build a solution for users using some technologies that helps them to visualize their meter from, by using their uh, uh, smartphones. Because nowadays, almost all the people in Bangladesh are using smartphones which is helpful for the users. OK, I think all of you know about Internet of Things. If not, let's discuss a bit. So what is Internet of Things? Uh, it's actually the device, vehicles, and other items embedded with electronics, software, sensors, and network connectivity that enables this object to collect and exchange data. So this is the well defined architecture of Internet of Things. So here, we, the physical device are there that use some kinds of connectivity to uh, connect themselves with the cloud. And from the cloud, so users get benefited from here. So there is an application or something else that receives the data from the cloud, actually from the sensors or device through the cloud and visualize their information using application. So some application area of IoT, yes, in uh, building automation, maybe we are using this. So almost everyone uh, able to control their uh, home appliance through, through mobile application. In manufacturing, people use to monitor their machineries and the uh, product line. Of course, uh, in environment monitoring, I saw some of the devices are there in Sanjian. They place some portable weather station over there. And maybe you can, uh, uh, using your application or mobile device, you can check the uh, weather. Of course, it's, uh, uh, it's uh, good for energy management. In transportation, we are using it. I will go for that. Uh, of course, it's better for elderly person. And there is a too much application domain. So in IoT, the best thing is if you name a problem, so if you name a problem, and you can have it in IoT. So it's uh, already developed in America. So a research shows that in office hour or in a peak hour, a person wastes 
around 40 minutes of time for finding a suitable place for parking their car. So this is a huge problem for them. And they come out for a solution that is helpful. So they integrate a mobile application with the parking space. And parking space is occupied with some sensors that can sense the vehicle, whether it is uh, empty or not. And it sends the data to the cloud. From the cloud, the application is there, and user can easily visualize the empty space through their mobile apps. And also, they integrate the navigation, as the user can easily navigate their car on the parking space. They also integrate, include some electronic payment system, as the user can easily pay through the application. Yes, this is for China. So almost all of you use this application, DD, for finding a taxi or hiring a taxi. So bef what's before? So before that, what people use? They go to the taxi stand, waiting for taxi, or calling the taxi, hey, I need a taxi. So now we are smart. We use the application. We call the taxi. So driver can easily navigate using the maps, as well as we also navigate the taxi's location through technology. So technology makes our life better. OK, now what's about co-making in sustainable agriculture? Yes, I am presenting the co-making of sustainable agriculture. Because this is important for us, for our country. So in Bangladesh, this is the most probably an agrarian country. Because of it has a favorable weather and a very fertile land. And agriculture sector contribute around 17% to the country's gross domestic product. And around 55% of total labor force comes from agriculture. Our main food is rice, and main crops is also rice. This is all, rice is also the main food of other African and Asian nations. And it's uh, also the uh, main ingredient for other foods as well, such as bread, pasta, noodles, cake, sector. So let's go a dip in Bangladesh. So we have only uh, 1,000, sorry, 1 million 47,570 square kilometers, where our population is 162.95 million. So it's an overpopulated country. That's the problem for us. And government of our country try to control this, but, uh, but we fail to control uh, the overpopulation. For them, so we need to feed those people. We need to provide the employment for them. We need to uh, provide homes for them. We have a very small country. How can we do that? So government are thinking, OK, let's do something that is, that is helpful for us. Why not we buy another planet, not the Earth? We buy the moon and send them to the moon. Not a good solution. OK, let's buy a nuclear bomb and blast it to reduce the population. Not also a good solution. So we need to be creative to solve this problem. We have a small amount of, amount of land for agriculture. And we have our population. We need to provide them food for future. We also provide them homes and employment. So this is a big challenge for our government. OK, the solution is later I'm talking about. So let, let's see the set of activities that rice plants need. So we need to select a suitable seeds for rice. We need to prepare the land for rice. We need to establish the crops. And we need to provide uh, proper irrigation or water. So we also provide some nutrient that is uh, helpful for better production. And we also control the crop's health. Or pest control is uh, important. OK. So here, a research sh shows that if you provide uh, 
better water management and nutrient management that gives us more production. So that's why we're focusing these two things and how we can uh, indicate something, some technologies over there that is helpful for rice plants and helpful for better production. Traditionally, farmers use their prediction and their time, periodic time for provide the irrigation. But over and under irrigation is not good for rice plant. And it's not an efficient way. We are losing energy as well. So how about automation system? So if we build a system that can, uh, based on the, the rice plants, how much uh, irrigation it needs, and when it needs the irrigation, we just provide the proper irrigation. Of course, it's good for rice plants. It consumes less energy, more efficient, and more productivity. This is our idea, but we don't know whether this is acceptable by the government or other people. Because we are makers, we are developers, we are engineers. So we need to verify our idea first. So we need to talk with rice expertise first, because we need to know how much amount of uh, water rice plants need. So after getting the positive feedback from the rice expertise, then we need to talk with the government. Because we need to say to them, this is important for us, and we, if you help us, we are going to develop this system which is helpful for our country. So once we get the permission from the government, we go for development. So here, as the makers, how can we solve this problem? So we place some sensors or device over there, and there is a controlling hub that collects data from this sensor. And there is a controlling system that can on and off the water pump according to, the, to those data. So you see, we name this problem, and we solve it through IoT. How about nutrient management? This is also important for better production. So traditionally, what our farmers did, they used their petition to provide fertilizer or some other supplement. Also, sometimes they go for local agriculture officer, take, uh, take their suggestion, and provide fertilizer. So this is a uh, big, big issue for one agriculture officer to monitor all the farmland at a time. And of course, greenhouse gas affect the soil fertility level. And sometimes farmers use the weather forecast for uh, uh, providing fertilizer. But uh, all the region doesn't have the same weather. How about uh, automation system? So if we somehow talk to the expertise and know how much nutrient a rice plants need, then we can solve this problem by using some connected things or IoT. For solving this problem, we need to talk with soil expert because we don't know the condition of the soil. We need to talk with rice expert as well as government, because government is going to fund us. So we also need to talk to the environment ex expert, because whether our device, uh, is there any impact of this device on environment? So after getting, getting all of them, we, we are makers, we are going to develop it. So we build something that manages the nutrient and provide the proper nutrient for the rice plants, which maximize the production level. Meaning that together we achieve the goal. The goal is better production and together makers, rice expert, soil expert, government, as well as environment expert, we build a solution which is helpful to achieve our goal. So how co-making structure actually works? So we need to first, we need to find the problem. And we need to engage some expertise for solving this problem. After that, we need to verify whether the solution is acceptable or not. Once we verified the solution, we engage the government or some other agencies for the fund. The developing needs some fund. After getting the fund, we go for development. 
So we are working with rice plants, but it's possible to work with other plants as well, such as maybe other countries like Netherlands wants to, uh, wants to take care about the tulip plants. Maybe some other countries want to take care about the grapes. Some countries need to uh, take care about the tomatoes or corns. Yes, they can identify this solution. They can talk with the expertise. They can verify their, uh, uh, their uh, system, and they can go for development by engaging their government as well. Meaning that the sky is not the limit. It's just only the beginning. Thanks for your attention. <laughs> Thank you. Thank and you so, don't ask thank me you too so much. much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. OK. Uh, we still have one question, OK? Everyone take a look. I can help you translate. I can help you translate. I can help you translate. Yes, one question. I want to ask you, the agricultural network is it for the government or the government? The fund comes from government. So we need a fund from government or other organization. Not for, for the farmers, we develop it for the farmers, but we need fund from government. So it's a 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 challenging issue for us because we have very limited amount of land and huge population. This is a challenge for government, not for the farmers. So government must pay us okay, for development. You. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Please have a seat, sir. Thank you. Thank you.